Good morning, Harvest City Church. We love you. God is wonderful. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. I was glad when they said unto me, oh, let us go into the house of the Lord. You may say, well, pastor, I'm not there with you this morning, but I want you to know where you are is the house of the Lord. And right now you can invoke his presence. So right where you are, I want you to begin to share this on your live stream. And I want you to begin to lift up the voice of God, lift up the voice of Zion in your house and give God praise. Let everything that have breath Praise the glory to God. Praise ye the Lord. I want you to know that this is a day of liberation. That this is a day of freedom. That this is a day of encouragement. That this is a day of insight. Hallelujah. Let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we love you. We honor you and we magnify you. Now, God, speak to our hearts. Speak to our minds. Move right now. If the atmosphere in our homes is not uh, is not conducive for you, we bind it right now. We move it out the way, oh God. We draw our minds in, oh God, so that we can give you glory, oh God. Father, we free up the atmosphere. Hallelujah. We come to magnify you. We come to lift you up, oh God. Father, we need the anointing, oh God, that transcends technology, oh God, to be with us, oh God. Father, you're greater, hallelujah, than any proximity. Oh God, you are greater, oh God, than any distance, oh God. So we say, show up and show yourself mighty and show yourself strong, oh God. We bind the hands of the enemy, we bind the hands of the adversary, oh God. God be glorified, God be glorified. God give us the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, God. Be glad of your soul, be glorified, oh God. Uh, we want you to be glorified, we want you to be glorified. Uh, Enter into our homes, oh God. Enter into our rooms, oh God. Enter into our living rooms, oh God. Enter into our jobs, oh God. Enter into our cars, oh God. We invite you, oh God. We say you are welcomed. We say you are welcomed. We welcome you, oh King. We welcome you, oh God. In the name of Jesus. We welcome you, Holy Spirit, to do what you do best. Now, God. Bless everyone in this service. Anoint them, O oh God, so that they may lead us into the presence of God, into the next level of glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Come on, clap those hands as our praise team comes. Hallelujah. We just come to lift up the great name of our God. There's nobody like you, Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord.
stronger than you, Lord. Nobody wiser than you, Lord. Your love, your love is greater than ours. Greater than ours. No one, no one greater. greater. Your strength, your strength is, greater than is greater than ours. No one, no one greater. greater. Your love, your love is greater.
you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Can we just begin to worship our great and mighty God? Hallelujah, Jesus. Nobody like you, Lord. Nobody nowhere, Lord.
Higher than our situations. You be glorified. You be magnified. I command my body to bless you. I command my mind to bless you. Hands, you will praise God. Feet, you will praise God. Voice, you will declare the goodness of God. I declare it in the land. Hallelujah. I'm sorry, y'all. Harvest, I'm just excited this morning. Woo! My God, my God. Yes, Lord. Thank you. Genesis chapter 28. When you have it, I want you to say amen. I want you to share this video. Glory to God. We lift you up. 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 We lift you up, oh God. And we honor you and we magnify you. Now, God, speak today. Whew. Hide us behind your cross. And we'll give your name the glory and we'll give your name the honor. In Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. Matthew, um, Genesis chapter 28. I'm going to read this short verse from the 13th verse to the 15th verse. And the Bible says, and God is speaking to Jacob in Bethel. And the Bible says, and behold, 
And I'm just going to talk to you this morning. And behold, the Lord stood above it and said, I am the Lord God of Abraham, your father, and the God of Isaac. The land on which you lie, I will give to you. And the land that he's in is the land of Canaan. He says, the land in which you lie, he says, I will give to you, not just you, but he says, and your descendants. Verse 14 says, also your descendants shall be as the dust of the earth. He's talking to Jacob. And the Bible says, watch this, not only shall they be the dust of the earth, and you shall spread abroad to the west, to the east, to the north, to the south, and in you and in your sea, all the families of the earth shall be blessed. Verse 15, I want you to stay with me today. Verse 15 says, behold, I am with you and will keep you whenever you go, wherever you go, and will bring you, watch this, back. I want you to type that for those who are watching on social media. I will bring you back, write the word back, to this land, for I will, watch this, I will not leave you until I have done what I have spoken to you. Today, I just want to preach or speak maybe for the next 15 minutes. I want to teach, should I say, from the topic, the subject type of topic, I hear the promise. I hear the promise. Um, brothers and sisters, I need you to pay attention because I believe that God is releasing a word for us that is going to change our perspective. There is a thought I have been wrestling with, and, uh, and I was studying this. The Lord allowed me to stumble upon this revelation. In Genesis, uh, we're going back so we can go forward. In Genesis chapter 15, God calls Abraham, and, and he tells Abraham to come forth from his kindred, and he would be blessed. He would multiply his seed, and it will be like the stars. In other words, what he's telling Abraham is that I'm going to bless you to the point that you're not going to be able to count the many blessings or to count the seeds that I'm giving you. Well, now Abraham has a son and the son of Abraham is called Isaac. And in Genesis chapter 26, God tells Isaac, he reaffirms the promise that he gave his father Abraham. And he says, I want you to stay in the land. He said, what, which we know to be known as the land of Canaan. And he said, I will give this land, watch this, to your descendants, the land because of the promise that I made to your father. Well, we got to keep going down the line. Now, Isaac, watch this, now has a son. And Isaac's son's name is Jacob. And Jacob is where this text picks up. God comes to Jacob in a dream. Uh, and he says, the land that you are laying on he says I'm going to give it to you and I'm going to give it to your descendants well later on in verse 15 he tells he tells him he says I am with you and I will keep you wherever you go watch this and this is where we pick up he says and I will bring you back I want you to type that word again back I will bring you back to this land now we have dealt with Abraham we have dealt with Isaac and now we have dealt with Jacob but Jacob is told to stay in Canaan and go would give him the land. But Jacob, watch this, now has a son. Pastor Bill, he, what do you mean? He, Jacob has 12 sons. And Jacob is in the land of Canaan. Well, one of Jacob's sons' name is Joseph. Pastor Bill, what are you trying to say? Joseph is sold by his brothers and he ends up in Egypt. And the reason he ends up in Egypt is because he is sold. And while he is in Egypt, God begins to favor Jacob. 
Jacob, I mean favored Joseph, but why is he favoring Joseph? It's not because Joseph was so anointed, but it was because of the promise that God gave Abraham. So while Joseph is in the prison, while Joseph is in the pit, God begins to elevate him until the second spot of the land. And now while Joseph is in Egypt, guess what? God gives him a vision and the vision that God allows him to interpret a vision. And the vision says that there's going to be a famine that hits the land. Well, that famine surely comes, but because Joseph heard the word of God, he now knows what to do. And he lets them know we have to prepare for the famine that's coming. Well, can I tell you something? The famine did not only affect um, Egypt, but it affected Canaan. Well, Pastor Bill, what are you trying to say? Who was in Canaan? Let me tell you, it was Joseph's family. Because of the, watch this, hallelujah, because of the drought, watch this, Joseph's brothers are now led to come to Egypt. Why? Because Egypt has food. And Joseph now finds out that his father, he recognizes his brothers and he asks them, is my father still living? And he comes to find out that his father is still living, but his father, I feel good, is living in the land of what? Canaan. I need you to catch this. Well, he tells his family, I need you to come to Egypt. Why? Because the famine is now affecting Canaan. Watch this. God tells um, Jacob, he speaks to Jacob a second time. Now remember, he spoke to Jacob when he was younger and he told Jacob, the land where you're laying, guess what? I'm going to give it to you and your descendants. And no matter where you go, I'm going to bring you back to this land. Well, God now speaks to Jacob once again. And he says, Jacob, I want you to know it's okay. Watch this. It's okay for you to take your family. It's okay for you to take your sons and to go to Egypt. Why? Because I am surely, or oh, I feel good. I need you to catch this. He says, I'm surely going to bring your family watch this back to this land now Jacob goes into Egypt and Joseph watch this allows because of his place in Pharaoh's life Joseph now gives his father Jacob the best of the land hold on Jacob now settles in Egypt watch this he settles in Egypt he lives in Egypt and the Bible lets us know that Jacob dies but watch this before Jacob dies he tells Joseph his son he says if there's any thing I want you to do what I want you to do is to make sure that you don't bury me in Egypt I want you to bury me in Canaan watch this I promise you we're going somewhere so now Jacob dies and he's buried in Canaan well guess what Joseph now becomes sick and Joseph dies but his family the children of Israel the 12 tribes of Israel which are the descendants of Jacob's 12 sons they are still in Egypt watch this and they begin to grow well in Exodus chapter 3 the Bible now tells us that there became a there arose a king who knew not Joseph in other words there arose hallelujah there arose a, under, a person that did not understand the relationship that the children of Israel had with Egypt I need you to come here so the Bible says that this king that did not understand the relationship what he says is he says we've got to do something with the children of Israel. Why? Because the children of Israel, they are multiplying. I wish I had some help. Pastor Bill, what are you trying to say? I'm, I'm trying to help you today. The children of Israel start multiplying. So what he says is, the king says, you know what? We got to do something about it. Why? Because if we don't do something about it, they're going to overthrow us and they're going to take our land. So what the Bible tells us is they begin to put the children of Israel into captivity. Here we go. Pastor Bill, we're getting ready to go somewhere. He, uh, we begin to put the children of Israel in captivity. But the Bible tells us that the more that they afflicted the children of Israel, watch this, the more the children of Israel grew. Okay, Pastor Bill, what are you trying to say? Some of you are trying to figure out why am I being afflicted the way I am? But there's a promise over your life that the more that you are afflicted, the more you will grow. Pastor Bill, I need you to help me out. So now the Bible lets us know that the children of Israel now are enslaved in a foreign land. What is the foreign land? The foreign land is Egypt. Here we go. Now the Bible 
lets us know that he calls forth a man by the name of Moses. Now, watch this. He tells Moses in Exodus chapter 6, he says, I also established my covenant with them to give them, watch this, the land of Canaan. Okay, so what he's trying to tell Moses is, I want you to know something, that I'm getting ready to give the children of Israel the land of Canaan. Pastor Bill, I need you to break this thing down. What is the land of Canaan? The land of Canaan is is the promised land. It is the land of milk and honey. And the Bible lets us know that through 10 plagues, um, Moses declares to Pharaoh, you got to let my people go. Pharaoh refuses to listen. Here we go. Pharaoh refuses to listen and God allows 10 plagues to get their attention. When the plagues come, Pharaoh releases the children of Israel. And the Bible lets us know that the children of Israel were on their way to to the promised land. Well, what is the promised land? The promised land is Canaan. Pastor Bill, what does all of this mean? Here we go. I believe that those of us who are listening to my voice, you are a part of the generation that will enter the promised land. Pastor Bill, um, what does that mean? That's all good and everything. But what the Lord is showing me is this, that, that whatever plague that we are in, that when we come out of this season, we are getting ready to go into the promised land the land of milk and honey the land that God has designed for us the land that God has promised our forefathers pastor Bill what are you trying to say we're getting ready to go there okay well that sounds good but I need you to help me a little further well I'm glad because when you bring this story into focus you realize something the children of Israel they were heading to a place that wasn't foreign to their bloodline okay pastor what are, what are you trying to say the children of Israel may have not been in Canaan before but their descendants the Jacob um, I, the Jacob Isaac and Abraham they were in the land of Canaan in other words, the children of Israel are going back to a place that God had pr promised them that they had never been before, but it was designated for them. Give me a second, Pastor Bill. What are you trying to say? Um, the story lets us know that the children of Israel did not begin in Egypt. See, when we tell the story, I'm going somewhere. When we tell the story, we tell the story as if, oh, well, they begin in e Egypt. But the truth of the matter is they begin in Canaan. Okay, I need you to talk to me because I don't understand this. In all actuality, the children of Israel are not going to a new place. They're not going to a place they've never been before. They're going to a place that they were already established in. Okay. I need you to talk to me. They're not going to Canaan. They're going back to Canaan. Okay, here we go. Here we go. This generation that will take the children of Israel back home, guess what? They only, up until this point, they only experienced oppression. I got to talk to somebody today. In other words, what I am trying to do, what I'm trying to tell you is beyond the oppression that you are familiar with in your family, there is a promise that was spoken before the oppression began. See, the children of Israel are aware of the oppression that they experienced in Egypt, but they are not aware of the promise that started in Canaan. Pastor Bill, I need you to help me. Okay, here we go. In other words, in other words, and I'm just talking to you today. In other words, you see your family uh, um, has, a, has a, a curse or has a, a affliction of alcoholism. But before the liquor ever entered into your bloodstream, there was a promise. But you don't see the promise because you've only been introduced to the problem. And the reason, watch this, why the enemy is after your bloodline is because he wants to distract you from the promise that is over your bloodline. In other words, if the enemy, here we go, if the enemy can get you to focus on the problem in your family, you will never begin to see the promise that is spoken over them. Hold on, pastor. 
I need you to talk to me because if you ever realize that there's a word over your family, that there's a word over your life that you're not aware of, you will begin to answer to that word. Okay, here we go. The truth of the matter is so many people that are listening this morning, uh, God is waking you up and I've got to talk to you. So I need you to hear me. God is waking you up to the promise that was spoken before the problem. Okay. In other words, I want you to know that you are aware of the problems in your family. But God said, I am starting to wake you up to the promises that have been spoken over your family. Although you've never experienced it before. Pastor Bill, I, I need you to break this down even more. See, some of us, if we be honest with ourselves, and I'm just teaching this morning, we are more familiar and we are more good at identifying problems that we are, we have failed to identify the promise that was spoken. And if we never identify the promise that was spoken, we'd never become the promise. Hold on, Pastor. I need you to talk to me. God calls Moses. Moses, who had never watched the edible side, Moses, who had never entered into Canaan, but he was a descendant of Canaan. He calls Moses and he speaks to Moses to wake up the promise in him that he wasn't even aware of. Pastor Bill. I want to talk to somebody today because God is allowing those who are listening this morning to realize that there's a promise in your life before there was oppression in your life. That there's a blessing in your life before you realize the destruction in your family. And God is saying, I am trying to bring you back to the Canaan that I released you from. Hold on, Pastor. Can I talk to somebody? And we're getting ready to get real uncomfortable this morning, but that's all right. You know, I honor the family. I honor my family, but some of you are saying there has to be more. I love my family, Pastor Bill, but some of you are saying, but there's something in me that says I know there's more. And you're trying to figure out why, trying to figure out what is this desire that I have? What is it coming from? Why? Because it's different than what I am exposed to. Okay, we got to talk about this. And now you're starting to feel uncomfortable. Watch this. And you don't even know the desires are changing. Why? Because God is waking you up to the promise that was spoken over your family before the oppression ever began. Okay, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, pastor. What are you trying to say? Moses, he begins to speak to Moses that Moses will now desire to enter into the promised land. But there were people and children of Israel that were in Egypt that did not have the desire to go into the promised land. So pastor, what are you saying? What God is doing in this season is he's waking some of us up to want something that our family did not even want. And you're trying to say, well, I should not want this because I ain't never seen nobody else have this. But the truth of the matter is the thing that God is allowing you to desire has been spoken over your life, although you have never seen it or heard it before. In other words, what God is saying is I'm starting to allow you to hear the promise before the oppression. Okay, can we, can we talk? I know it's going to be rough because some of you are watching with your family, but when you come out, your whole family's coming out. So let's talk about this. Some of you are saying, Pastor, I find that my desires are changing. And the truth is, God is speaking to me, and I don't know where it's coming from. You've always found yourself, can we talk this morning? You've always found yourself to be peculiar. You've always found yourself to be strange. I know I ain't talking to nobody out there. You've always found yourself to be different than the people in your family. You love them, but you've always considered yourself to be the black sheep. You never seem to fit in. Uh, and it's not because you thought you were better. It's something that was on you that said, I feel connected to something I don't even understand. 
And I believe that everyone that's listening, hear me, this, hear the word of the Lord, that everyone that is listening to my voice is a generation that God is waking you up to the Canaan before the Egypt. See, it's hard to go, have an understanding and a conception of Canaan when all you've experienced was Egypt. So, Pastor Bill, I said this to somebody earlier this week that I believe that there is a rise of veganism in the land because it's combating the gluttony of the oppression that your generations have experienced. So now all of a sudden, can we talk this morning? Now all of a sudden, you are you ate pig feet your whole life, but something in you now says, I want to try to eat whole wheat. I want to try to eat healthier, although everyone in your family don't eat that way. Or maybe I believe that there's a rise of minimalism and the reason that there's a rise of minimalism is because it's combating the spirit of mammon that has affected your generation in oppression. Okay, okay. I need you to help me, Pastor. I need you to help me because I want you to understand something. A lot of us are in a season where we find ourselves confused because I feel led to something I've never experienced before. In other words, what I am saying to you is the promise before the promise is calling your name. Hold on. I'm not talking about the problem because some of you are like, well, this is what happened. This is what my family did. This is what we went through. But I come to tell you the promise before the problem is starting to call your name. And God is waking something up in you that says, I can't participate in every moment. Uh oh. I can't eat the same things my family's been eating. I can't drink the same things my family's been drinking. Why? Because Zion is calling me to a higher place. Okay, here we go. The Bible lets us know that the children of Israel are entering back into the promised land, which is Canaan. This is not a land that they are unfamiliar with. They, Jacob was in Canaan. Isaac was in Canaan. And Abraham was in Canaan. Now the Bible tells us this. That before they got ready, I need you to watch this today. Before they got ready, when after they came out of bondage, before they got ready to enter into the promised land, the Bible lets us know they sent spies into Canaan. And what does that mean? They sent spies into Canaan to scout out the land. Oh, glory to God. In other words, Pastor Bill, what, is, what are you trying to say? Some of you are in, experiencing that same thing today. How, would, how do you proclaim that? Some of you are trying diets you ain't never tried before. Some of you are trying challenges you ain't never tried before. Some of you are trying financial things you ain't never tried before. And what you're really doing is your spirit is sending out spies to the place that you're getting ready to go. Okay, okay, here we go. Some of you think that these challenges that are catching your attention are just random challenges. But really what it is, is your spirit saying, there's a promise over my life that I'm trying to get back to. So these challenges that we are seeing in the land are really just spies scouting the place that you're going to. In other words, think it not strange if you get off a 31 day fast and you say well you know what I ain't going back to what I used to eat. Think it not strange if you get off a 30 way, 31 day financial fast or challenge and you say to yourself I can't go back. Why? Because your spirit was sending a spy back to Canaan. Pastor Bill, what are you trying to say? In other words, you, hold up our side, you will be the generation that gets back to the promise before the problem. Okay. In other words, Pastor, I need you to hear me. I need you to hear me this morning. You, I don't care what you've been through. You, I don't care how you feel. You will be the generation that gets back to the promise before the oppression. Okay. Can I help somebody? In other words, what I'm trying to tell you this morning is it stops with you. 
Oh, Pastor Bill, I, I've proclaimed that so many times. I've declared that so many times. What are you trying to say? It stops with me. Can I talk to you a little bit? Alcoholism stops with you. Promiscuity, pr promiscuity it stops with you. Being undisciplined, it stops with you. Seeing dreams but never getting them accomplished stops with you. Adultery stops with you. Early death, premature death stops with you. Diabetes stops with you. Cancer stops with you. Suicide. Some of you in your family, you have a tendency to see people that are committing suicide. But guess what? You won't take your life uh, early. You won't commit suicide. You won't stop stop short you won't give up because it stops with you i don't care what you feel you gotta stay in the race shacking stops with you some of you seen shacking in your family and you think that this is what i'm gonna do it stops with you insecurity some of you have never been confident why because grandma won't confident great grandma won't confident guess what it stops with you perversion stops with you mammon stops with you worry stops with you anxiety stops with you depression stops with you cycles stops with you why pastor bill because some of that things some people will say well pastor this is some of that stuff that you just mentioned oh that's hereditary science will tell us that that is hereditary but i want to let you know everything is not hereditary some things are habitual You've learned this. You've been socialized to some of these habits that produce the same results. And now some of you are saying, well, Pastor, well, some of us know that science makes some of these things hereditary. But the Bible tells me, behold, I am the God of all flesh. Is there anything too hard for me? In other words, you have seen the oppression of Egypt, but God says, I'm going to break it with you and bring you back to Canaan. So, Pastor Bill, why did you say all this today? Why did you take us to this text? Because some of you are in this place of this quarantine and you're working on stuff. You don't even know why you're working on it. You, you, you got dreams and you got visions and you don't even know why you God is speaking those things to you. You got some of you. Watch this. Some of you have been having ideas of you counting a lot of money. You having multiple bank accounts. You being a philanthropist, but your family has always been low income. Why? It's not because that's the promise over your life. You've just been exposed to the problem. But God says there was a promise before there was ever a promise, a problem. So what I want you to know as our musicians play, that God is saying, I am getting ready to restore you back, glory to God, to the promise that occurred before the problem that you experienced in Egypt. Can I tell you something? Some of you will be the first in your family to accomplish some things. Some of you will be the first in your family to break some generational cycles. Some of you will be the first in your family that says, you know what? I know it's always been this way, but it stops with me. God is trying to share with us this morning that, yeah, you've gotten familiar with Egypt, but you didn't start in Egypt. You started in Canaan. And I want to pray for you this morning before our praise team comes. I want to pray that God begins to keep speaking to you because some of you are hearing God speak to you in ways that you keep passing it by. Why do you keep passing it by? because ain't nobody in my family ever do that before. I ain't never see that happen. And if it happens, surely it can't happen with me. But I come to let you know, it can. Not only can it, but it will. Not only will, but it's getting ready to happen. Some of you will come out of this quarantine season and you will walk into the promised land and you will say, hallelujah, when you get there, can I tell you, if we get ready to move, can I tell you how you know it was a promise before there was a problem? Because some of you walk into certain places that you've never been before, and you say, this feels like me. 
Some of you walk into, some of you have went to hotels that you've never stayed at before. And you say, I can get used to this. This, this seems like my taste. How is it that I can be familiar with something I've never experienced before? It feels like I've been here before. No, what's happening is God is reconnecting you to the promise before the problem. Some of you are saying, you know what? You're, you're doing things differently. You're moving differently. You're walking differently. You're, you're making moves differently than your family. And it seems so normal to you, although it's so unfamiliar. Can I tell you? Because you're connecting to the promise. Some of you are so uncomfortable right now because you're having to make decisions. Do I do this to honor my family or do I do what God called me to do? The promise is calling you. Hey, glory to God. Some of you right now, even under my voice, you're saying, you know what? Pastor Bill, that makes sense. Some of you say, you know what? Can I talk one more thing? Our praise team is coming at this time. One more thing. Some of you are experiencing the spirit of abandonment. And the reason that you're experiencing abandonment is because you feel like God put me in the wrong family. Oh, come on. I ain't talking to nobody today. It just seems like God dropped me off in the wrong place. Why didn't he drop me off down the road? No, 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 no. Yeah, no, 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 no. You are in the right family. But you're connecting to the promise before the problem. So you're not comfortable living in the same place. You're not comfortable resigning in the same city. You're not comfortable doing the same things. Why? Because the promise is calling you. Some of you are saying today, Pastor, I feel like this word was for me. Uh, even some of you say, the cycles in my family have been so overwhelming. Somebody that's listening today said, all we've been doing is gang banging. Somebody listening today says, all we've been doing is hustling. But I feel like God has called me to business. Why? Because there's a promise over your life before you were ever exposed to the problem. And God is releasing you this morning. Hallelujah. To get back to the promise. God is releasing you this morning to get back to the place he called you. God is releasing you this morning. You're saying, well, this ain't me. It is you. You just don't know it yet. Well, me having my own business, this ain't me. We, My family, we don't do those type of things. Yes, they do. You just haven't witnessed it before the problem. But God is eradicating the problem and bringing you into the promised land that you were always determined to go. He told, it, he told Abraham, you'll have this land. He told Isaac, you'll have this land. He told Jacob, you'll have this land. But then Jacob goes into Egypt. And then in Egypt, he tells them again, I'm going to bring you back into the promised land. Can I pray for somebody today? Father, in the name of Jesus, somebody is struggling this morning because you're giving them ideas and they don't even know how to comprehend them. God, somebody is wrestling this morning because you're speaking to them and they've never seen this type of anointing or this type of plan manifested in their family. But God, I thank you that today a revelation has arisen that there's, there's nothing wrong with me, but I'm being connected to the promise before the problem. Father, I pray right now that someone that's listening will begin to wake up and say there's a promise over my life I may have not have seen it before I may have not have been there to witness it but God is speaking to me there's a promise Moses there's a promise and unlike Moses you're going to see the promised land you're going to walk into it you're going to learn from the mistakes of the children of Israel and you're going back to the place a lot of people said let's go back to Eden I think the rightful place is, let's go back to Canaan. So right now, God, if there's anyone that's listening under the sound of my voice that says, you know what? Nobody in my family is saved. But for some reason, I feel a tug. You're being promoted back to the promise. And today, I want you to give your head coat up, Isaiah. Today, I want you to give your life back to God. Because it originated with him. Before you were exposed to the lust. Before you were exposed to the issues. Before you were exposed to what is in you. There was a promise over your life. 
He tells Jeremiah, before I formed you in your mother's womb, I knew you and I set you apart. Before you dealt with the anxiety, before you dealt with the pressure, God said, I had a promise. So today, if you hear my voice, harden not your heart. So, to God. Somebody says, I want to give my life to God. And if that's you, I want you to repeat after me. God, thank you for loving me. Thank you for having a promise over my life before I was ever exposed to the problem. Father, I believe that you are the son of the living God. That you came to earth to show me the way. And I believe that you died on the cross just for my forgiveness just for my pardon three days later you got up with all power in your hand and one day you're coming back just for me because you love me today I believe and I receive your grace I receive your forgiveness and I decree and declare that I am saved longer the same in Jesus name amen listen I would get ready to sow our praise team is getting ready to give to sing this song but can I just tell you one more thing that came to my heart while we were praying some of you are in a place of conflict because you don't will you have not experienced the problem the promise over your life you've only been introduced to problems as long as you can remember to the point that the enemy is trying to tell you this is just who you are this is just who you're going to be but i cancel the assignment of the enemy right now and i let you know there is a promise there is a greater you there is a perfected you some of you are settling for brokenness but God says there is a whole you that you've never seen before lift up your hands everyone lift up your hands God is getting you back to your place of Canaan Canaan, I believe, is also a spiritual place. And I hear the Lord say, that you're coming out of this quarantine season and you're not coming back to yourself. Because some of you say, I'm going to get myself back. I'm coming back to myself. I'm gaining myself back. I'm restored. No, 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 no. God is saying, I'm getting you back to before you remember yourself. There's a greater state. Hallelujah. There's a more holistic state, hallelujah. And you don't even have a reference point for it right now. But God is saying, trust me. I'll make you new, trust me. I'll make you whole, Ed Abbasaya, trust me. I'll turn it around, trust me. I'll bring you back to a place you've never experienced, trust me. He wants you to trust him. Although it's unfamiliar, if you be honest, it still feels like it's you. Some of you have you know, you're in jobs that you don't even qualify for. And although it's unfamiliar, when you sit at your desk, you say, But it feels so right. Because God is restoring you to Canaan. I want you to know today, if I don't say nothing else, as our praise team gets ready to close us out. God is bringing us into Canaan before this quarantine is over. And when you get out of this place, woo, don't answer to who you were. Oh, I feel that. Because some people, they only know you by the problem you experienced. They only know you by the struggle you've had. But that's not me. That was the problem. I am the promise. Hey, Kotabashah. get out of this don't call me by my problem anymore let me introduce you to my promise oh yeah don't call me by my problem anymore let me introduce you to my promise somebody's being restored in this moment somebody's the tears are flowing in this moment we get ready to go but somebody needs this 
There is a greater you. There is a restored you. There is a come on, my shata. Come on, come on, receive it. Come on, receive it. Come on, yeah, yeah. Receive it. It is for me. It is for me. It is for me. Uh oh, it is for me. Uh oh. The truth of the matter is, some of you have turned away, and I feel this, and I'm moving. And I'm going to give this mic to Sister Tam. But some of us are turning away. We have turned away opportunities because we felt it wasn't for us. Because we did not know there was a promise before the problem. And I hear the Lord saying, there is no opportunity that you miss that he's not going to bring back. But when he brings it back, you're going to have an understanding, oh, this is for me. You are getting ready to walk out of the season where you start denying stuff because you say, well, that's not me. They say, well, I want you to do this. Well, this ain't me. I want you to go here and say this. This ain't me. Could you do this for me? Ah, oh, that ain't me. No, it is you. I got one more thing. The truth of the matter is, the reason you have been getting these questions is because other people realize, there are some people that realize the promise before the problem, but because you never did, you never accepted it. God has sent certain people in your life to say, I, I believe God has called you to do this. He's like, nah. And he's allowed them to see a glimpse of your promise even when you didn't allow yourself to. But after today, you'll never be able to go back because the promise is calling your name. Now, I want you to sow into this moment. Come on, come on. You can take us out with the song. I want you to sow into this moment. Come on. I want everybody to sow into this moment. All of our tithers, we're sowing. I want everybody to sow into your promise. I'm going back to the place before the problem. Come on, come on. We're sowing together. I'm sowing myself. But I want you to sow. I want everybody. I don't care if you're giving a dollar. I want you to sow into this anointing. Come on, come on, come on. Come on, come on, come on. We're sowing together. Come on, come on, come on. Come on, we're sowing together. We're declaring all of our needs are met. Hallelujah. All of our bills are paid. And we have more than enough. Come on. All of our bills are paid. All of our needs are met. All of our debts are canceled. We have more than enough. We're getting back to Canaan. God bless you. And we'll see you Sunday night, or Wednesday night at 7.30. God bless you. Let it ride.